to let what's going on. Here. You know what they've done is they've went all the way to the edge without saying Bob Bob is taking kickbacks on it. But what part is false? Is the fact that you know there is no conflict of interest right here, and the attorneys who are smart people inside conduit know there's no conflict of interest there. There isn't because I'm a private attorney who represented Ecclesia College previously. I didn't even know that there was there was an FOI suit that, that was was brought because I'm down here working. Now, if I were back home, maybe I would even know about that kind of stuff, and then I could be making money, and then I wouldn't be down here going broke. But I'm down here, so I didn't even know that stuff was going on back there. All I've done is seen as a bill that has has a real problem that needs to be addressed, and so I'm willing to step up and try to try to address it. The issue is there is no conflict of interest. So why did they say that? Why would they bring that up, and why would they push that out there? And, and on top of it, I, I mean, I can show you all the text back and forth with Brenda over the years, years, that she's had my cell phone, and we've communicated, and I've stuck my neck out time and time again taking stands against the governor, taking stands for you, for you, Thank for you. liberty. That's why I'm here, is for liberty. She could have called me. Josh would have called me. He would have called me. If he knew what was going on, he would have called me. He would okay, tell me about this, Bob. But they didn't. Why didn't they do that? Why didn't they do that? They didn't, they didn't do that because they wanted to put that out. It was purely an attack. And, and just like Mark was saying, I appreciate Mark saying that. I mean, it's probably a God thing that, that Mark had that to say. You know, this is the thing. When the left, during RIFRA, and I was getting attacked, and my, my family was being threatened, and all that stuff going on, man, that's no big deal. No big deal. You guys hurt me, though. The riot hurts me. Because that's why I'm here. It's for you guys that I'm here. That hurts me. I mean, it, 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 this kind of stuff that they just put out, if it gets legs, it could destroy me. And that's okay. My God has control of me. He has, he is, he, uh, my, my reputation is in his hands. And if that means I go home to take care of my family and be able to stay with them instead of being down here, oh, man. I'm, you know, I, I, that's okay. If that's what God wants, that's what I want. But, but I feel like I'm in my calling. I feel like I'm doing what God wants me to do. And if I don't have the courage to take a stand on some little thing that I really don't care about, but I know it's the right thing, then I don't want to be here. I want to go home. I don't want to be here. And so, you know, we can disagree about it. And, and we can say, you know, maybe this still it gives an opportunity. It's not worth it. Okay, I understand that. But I wouldn't be here taking the hit if I didn't think it was, it was a decent and the right thing to do. And that's, that's kind of, I didn't plan on preaching or, or freaking out like I did. I apologize. Amen. I do. I got to check. I got But, I mean, this is the thing is that yeah, one thing that I'll say, take me out of this altogether. If you have a legislator who's, who is 87% of the time doing the right thing, hold him accountable when he does the wrong thing, but in kindness, in love, in humility. You know, we're supposed to do it in a, in a, in a Christian, that's, that is, and I promise you it's more effective. I mean, there is a place for righteous anger, but that is, I mean, Jesus used it one time, and, and I mean, and, and so look for that other, all those other things, and I think like Mark said, is that the best place to do it, we are just a bunch of dopes, right? We're just a bunch of local people that, who are, you know, having coffee, and I know they're busy, but you can set up, have coffee, come to their office, you know, if you really want to make a difference, there were 10 people who got me elected my, in, in my first primary race. 10 people. Without which any one of those 10 people, I would not have been elected. And I, go be one of those 10 people. And, I, and, I, and, and let me say this, that, you know, there are people here that, that I listen to because they're up here all the time and I talk to them. You know, I, I, we aren't always going to agree, but he comes around and he is, uh, I've yet to see him attack me personally on, on anything. Another one is Paul Cabert. He's up here. He's around all the time. You know, I don't agree with him. Sometimes I think he's quirky and weird and gets it wrong. But, and he speaks against my bills sometimes. I don't like that. But, it, but I respect him, and, I, and he respects me. And if he's around, we, we'll run off to dinner every once in a while just because we're, we're here. And I know that we all can't do that. So, like, Paul's a, I mean, But when you're back home, you may be able to. So get, a, get your local legislation, especially if you see someone who seems to be right. And seems to be kind of a, a bright and rising star. You know, he's he's not only is he right on the issues, but he's intellectually he can be effective. You know, grab a hold of them and take them to lunch, whether he's a JP or a city council member, and, and then help him raise up so he can come up here and help stand against tax increases. Because it's miserable. I mean, it's miserable being ran over by you know everybody, and then feel like you know I've got no allies and no friends anywhere else. 